Hey guys, what's going on? Good to see you in April. Spring is already here and I decided to record this episode about real estate market update. My name is Oleg. I'm a real estate broker with Winner Value Comments. In this episode, I'm going to cover Seattle area and all east side. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to cover a little bit Snohomish County and a little bit King County and we'll give a lot of data, a lot of information, a lot of stats, what's happening and what you expect in real estate market in near future. Stay tuned with me and do not forget to smash like button and subscribe to my channel. There are very interesting situations we do have in the market. I heard about Fannie Mae changing rules for appraisals and Fannie Mae is a government agency so in some lenders, some banks working with Fannie Mae and uh, what's changing right now in the market for mortgage side? Fannie Mae make decisions not to count as square footage where you have low ceiling or you guys can see a lot of homes in Queen Anne. They have those sloped ceilings, like low ceilings, uh, specifically in the attic and the roofs. And those square footage not going to be count as a livable square feet, even if livable square feet. So what that means, it means uh, if you're going to sell the property and you have one of those Queen Anne properties with low ceilings or maybe with a, a second floor in the roof, and uh, those square footage not going to be count if you're working with buyers who are using a um, lender who are using Fannie Mae. So this is like really, really important to understand who is your buyer. If you're a seller, you decide to sell the property, you need to know like who you're working with. You need to know what kind of loan your buyers have because maybe you list this property like 2,000 square feet and the appraisal will come up and says this is property only 1,000 square feet. And this going to be reflect a lot of sellers, a lot of people. And some buyers not going to be able to buy the property, but also some uh, sellers not going to be able to sell the property if they working with Fannie Mae lender. But I'm sure uh, Freddie Mac going to be adopt this as well, FHA going to be adopt this as well. Those uh, changes we see in our industry and those changes important for the clients, for sellers specifically, who have those low ceilings uh, houses, second floors in the roof. That's going to be make very difficult to sell those type of properties. Guys, as you know, a lot of talk about uh, coming, coming up recessions, specifically on YouTube. And a lot of buyers hoping uh, to get lower price for the houses. They're thinking when interest rates going to be increased, like increasing right now, and this continue going to increase even more. They're hoping more listings going to be in the market available. Uh, they're going to get better deal and they're going to be buy a house for lower price. And uh, that's going to be happen. But what we see right now in real estate market in all Seattle, all east side locations, it's totally a positive thing. We see right now very low inventory and very high demand. Supply is important in real estate market. And uh, even with high interest rate, interest rate increase almost for 2% within a few months, like two, three months. Two years mortgage rate for con confirming loan for conventional buyer is about 5%, 5, 5, 5 and a half percent. And uh, increasing mortgage interest rate for almost 2%, decreasing buyer's power for 20%. Imagine uh, if you're buying a house for like $700,000 in Seattle or you're buying a house for $1 million in Eastside, uh, you decreasing your power for almost $200,000. That's a huge, huge decrease. And you guys can see, so to have seller's market, we have from zero to two months inventory, which is we're fighting right now to get more supply, but we don't have the supply for last probably seven, eight years. And uh, only I remember in 2018 when uh, we got more supply and we was slowly hit into recession, but COVID came and everything changed again and switched back to the seller's market from the buyer's market and just continue going on the same things. But to have a buyer's market, we have to have balanced market before that. Buyer's market in real estate, we consider it uh, if you have four months uh, inventory on the market and those houses going to be listed for four months doesn't sell. That's will be strong buyer's market. But balance market between two to, to four months inventory. We don't even have a one month inventory in most locations. Like on this side right now, we have 0.4 months inventory. 
and that's going to that's going on for almost one year and uh, to get to the balance market and we have to have a lot of supply that means we have to have not thousand listings in Sammamish or in thousand in Issaquah, in thousand in Bellevue, thousand in Kirkland, thousand in Redmond. We, we have to have like 2,000, 3,000 homes in each city listed every month. And probably with a few months, we're going to move to the balance market. But myself, I'm clearly not see that. And why I don't see that? Because those people who think maybe to sell the property, they want to buy property in same locations, and they ask me the same questions. Okay, well, look, we're going to sell property, but what are we going to buy? It, it's almost impossible to buy to compete with like 30 to, to 40 offers on the market. And uh, they decide to still put, not buy anything, and still live in a house where they live. That's why we have very, very low supply. I'd like to show you for you guys this graph first. What's happened city by city, your favorite graph. And you guys can see pretty much everywhere, everywhere price increase. Uh, the most increase we see in West Bellevue uh, with only few homes sold there in March, uh, was 63 homes sold. They have increased 42%. East of like Samamish, at Samamish and Issaquah Plateau increase about 35% with 367 homes sold in March. And uh, in Seattle, for example, uh, we have the most increase in Ballard. In Ballard, uh, we have 524 homes sold and uh, with 14% price increase. And I'm going to go through each city. You guys can pause this video and look for yourself for your city what's happening. But in general, even, even we have some listings on the market, we have probably like thousands of homes sold in months of March. We still have huge demand from buyers. We have price increase in every neighborhood around Seattle and East Side. And now let's jump into east side and I'll go through specifics of what's happening in the month of March. You guys can see with me on the screen right now, $1,700,000 medium sell price and price increase year over year for about 26%. We have 0.4 months inventory, it's very low inventory with 779 pending sales in March of May. But also what we see, we have increased inventory a little bit from previous March from 0.2 months to 0.4 months. And for me, this shows a little bit positive trend. I hope you can get more listings and going to have this nice splash for the buyers from this hotness of real estate market. Also, I want to come back to inventory, how inventory is important, regardless what interest rate on the market. You guys can see on this slide on this side, average for 10 years, we have 0.9 months inventory in months of March. Right now we have 0.4 months inventory. It's a pretty much health from the normal, from the average what we have. But even if you have average, you guys can see for last 10 years, price increase and increase like between 9%, 3%, to 30 and 26 percent for last couple of years and as of selling 89 percent with only four percent four percent property did not close on time so what is four percent property i'm talking about in my market update so those properties get under contract but for some reason um, some reason buyers decide not to deposit the earnest money Sometimes they have like two days or, or like three days and they decide to walk away in the property and those contracts pretty much fell in apart. 95% of all homes in CLC sites sell in less than 15 days on the market. And about 1.8% selling between 15 days to 30 days. But also I want to show you guys see medium sell price to list price. They sell in about 20% above asking price. This is like 95% of all homes in sales east side selling to about 20% above asking price. What that means? So pretty much every buyer who submitted an offer right now, they planning to submit an, an offer with 20% above asking price. And uh, winning competition or winning buyers probably submitting even more. But 20% above asking price, that's a lot. But those sellers who did not price property right or maybe overpriced property and property did not sold within the first 15 days, you guys see what's happening. It's selling 98% from the list price. So they're selling for 20% less than people who price property right. So pricing is very important and very important to work with experienced agents who know how to price your home and how to bring your home to the market. And switching to Seattle areas, 
you guys can see with me on the screen right now we have medium sell price in march 970 thousand dollars with a 10 percent increase year over year and uh, when it was a good time to buy house in Seattle, guys it was in 2019 uh, prices was dropping uh, from 2018 for about eight percent but after 2019 prices continue to increase slowly and this year they increased the most 18 percent with medium sell price again 970 thousand dollars in Seattle, we have right now 0.3 months of inventory with 873 pending sales recorded in Northwest MLS. For Seattle guys, you can see on this slide, we have right now 0.3 months inventory, but average, average for 10 years, it has to be about one month. But right now we have 0.3 months. So it's much, much lower than average. And now we see hotness in Seattle's areas as well and Seattle real estate market. Seattle real estate market much more affordable than inside. Uh, probably health price from his side currently and we see uh, from like 20 to 30 offers right now in Seattle we have high high demand for housing market and a lot of buyers interested in Seattle and specifically in North Seattle's location 71 percent of all homes in Seattle sell them above asking price and 17 percent selling at asking price and the property selling about asking price was about five days on the market. It takes about 10 days to sell property at asking price. And 91% of all homes in Seattle sell in less than 15 days on the market. Pricing is very important, not just for East Side, for Seattle and for any locations. Make sure you price your property right to get top dollars and to get multiple offers. And let's cover a little bit Snohomish County and King County. In Snohomish County, guys, you can see on this slide, we have medium sell price in March was $800,000 for all homes and price increased for about 25%. Price was uh, slowly increasing every year differently, but this year and last year was increased the most. Last year was increased for 22% and this year was increased for 25%. In average, in Snohomish County, we have 0.7 months inventory and we have 0.4 months inventory in months of March. Again, we have very low inventory, we have strong sellers market. And let's see what's happening in King County. In King County, we have medium sell price $930,000 with 13% increase year over year. Increase less than last year. Last year was increased for about 15%, but also we have very low supply, 0.4 months of inventory, comparable to average inventory supposed to be in months of March, right now 0.8 months. We don't have probably 50% home used to have on the market right now, and a lot of sellers did not sell in property, and we still have strong sellers market in King County as well. I know it's very difficult to be a buyer right now, but to buy property, you do have to prepare uh, to win this game and you have to start early. We're hoping to get more supply in sales and east side, but nobody knows when we're gonna get those listings on the market. I don't believe increasing mortgage rates going to be help for that. I don't believe inflation is going to be help for that because a lot of investors looking for real estate as a hedge against inflation and they want to buy more properties as well. But uh, I'm thinking uh, what's going to be changed in the future if we're going to have some kind of big recessions or unemployment going to be changed to increase. So if you see the guys unemployment increasing and we have less jobs available on the market, that might be leads to the more listings on the market, more, more sales and it's going to be better and easier for real estate market. And also my thoughts about why is this happening in our area. Uh, you guys can watch the video, I will put it in the descriptions below about Silicon Valley number two. Why this location is really hot and why a lot of buyers want to buy properties near Seattle and specifically in the east side location. Watch that video and that video is going to be answer a lot of your questions about hotness of real estate market. I think that's it for today guys. Uh, smash like button, subscribe to my channel, stay tuned for future episode and I hope you enjoy. I hope you like this content. We'll see you guys next month. Make a fantastic week.